Hi there! This is an extra video that I split off for time from my immediately preceding one on the revelation that the White Walkers are going to return in House of the Dragon Season 2. That at least the White Zombies will appear on screen. That we had this leaked photo of a makeup test board that very prominently says Undead on it with pictures of the Zombie Whites. So whether the, the White Walker Masters will appear or not, I'll make that distinction that something of the Undead threat from the North story will actually appear. This lines up with other leaks we had that we've seen they've built a set for the wall, they, we've seen Night's Watch Rangers, they could have just done that as a virtual set, they didn't, which means this is a major invention. But I already discussed this in the first video, this point I'm splitting off is entirely devoted to House of the Dragon versus Game of Thrones, that there is no Night King in the books they made him up as a generic evil overlord. Nothing we saw in, in Game of Thrones is the actual, real story of the White Walker invasion. We learned practically nothing. I mean, there was a revelation which was a hint in the books that the Children of the Forest created them, but other than that one bullet point, they were created by the Children of the Forest, which was already a book fandom theory. We didn't learn anything about their hierarchy, their internal history, what exactly they're trying to do, how they affect the seasons which last for years, which Martin said he will eventually reveal how and why that's happening, it's tied to them. We got none of that. So, well, in this, it's actually two related points. First, on a general level, the revulsion against the White Walker story in general after Season 8, and then specifically the Night King thing, that just... White Walkers in general, they overhyped without actually developing, they relied on empty spectacle to deflect that I really hate that that so many people were obsessed with Hard Home was a terrible episode. It's just an action, it's a action spectacle. And the irony, and I need to keep repeating this, all they did, they didn't, there were actual articles saying they handle this better than the books. No, they don't. They just skipped ahead to the action scenes. That isn't storytelling. And as it turns out, they paid for that the whole expression robbing Peter to pay for Paul, that Sapochnik admitted in the Season 8 commentary we used up every idea we were saving for the series finale at Hard Home and in other Season 7 things, so we had completely run out of ideas and Whites weren't scary anymore by Season 8. That's just bad planning. It's skipping ahead to something isn't better. And if, for people obsessed with Hard Home, then it, that's what Season 8 should have been. They should have built up to that, or we should have had ice spiders, big as hounds, or other stuff that they really didn't feel the need to do, and they were just racing through, and they laughed this off in the postseason eight interviews. It's so weird, but in many ways, this is what came up in season one of House of the Dragon when they reintroduced the White Walker prophecy that Aegon the Conqueror was in truth secretly motivated by a prophetic dream that the, the White Walkers would return. And this is the source of the novel series name, The Song of Ice and Fire. And Martin confirmed all of that, that that is the, the real book canon. And I, it's so weird that I'd see, like, not... When I say reaction channels, I don't mean gen generic reaction. I mean professional reviewers from published things, like on the scale of a... Ver not variety, but things like that, to the, the semi-pro reviewers like Angry Joe and a bunch of other mainstream reviewers would voice... Why should I... Can't, that was so bizarre to me. They'd say, I can't get invested in that because I know how the White Walker story ends. And unfortunately, this is just a thing we're going to have to keep repeating on a scale of years through when this comes to a head with the next book release. That... Do you seriously think that was the real ending of the books? And I'm very angry about this. I want to make this video mostly to give you an opportunity to be heard in the comments that... The effing Sansa rape and racist TV Dorn weren't in the books. And yet by season eight, you assume this is the real story. That It's really a matter of brain drain that anyone who was asking analytic questions by season seven or eight had already abandoned the show. So the, the, the sorting algorithm that anyone watching by season eight had long since abandoned asking questions. It's not. Let me make, underscore this, make it clear. There are some people who, if you've come to the rational conclusion after dialectic debate that I think season eight is in broad strokes book canon, fair enough. It freaks the hell out of me that some people do not even ask that question.
not just that you disagree with these, that they go, they sort of just, it's weird seeing the reaction of people when you point out, do you think this is the book ending? They really never asked. Because it's so, they were so traumatized that it's this whole thing, I've talked about this before, they don't even want to discuss this, that I thought season eight would result in a backlash leading to a wave of analysis of what went wrong behind the scenes. But when I see, like, Angry Joe, for example, said just, I can barely even talk about this show. I haven't watched, heard, and people going, I haven't seen the, the word Daenerys written in print in the three years since the finale until I saw the title card thing for House of the Dragon episode one. Genuinely traumatized, and just, you do not have that luxury if you were a journalist or something. The, the regular people I understand, but critics who wouldn't scrutinize the Sansa rape and TV Dorn and Stannis and all the craziness with the Arya Bravos chase, and then you get to stand back and say, I'm so upset about it, after it was revealed they're crazy people, I don't want to even analyze what happened. Step aside and let the rest of us a analyze it and do the reporting for you, or you will be pushed aside. That the utter failure of the news media apparatus for handling this. And I thought they couldn't fail even more. But then after this, I'm too traumatized to even investigate it or ask these questions. Some of the more, exa more exaggerated things like, will Daenerys go evil in the books, is so ridiculous that people would flat out question, is this the book ending or not? But it's weird how people can compartmentalize things. Where, oh, that's not it, but it must be this. Do you think Arya kills the night kill is the key to killing the White Walkers in the books or something? I'll get to the Night King stuff later, but they don't even ask. That And it's weird when you saw the things for the first episode of House of the Dragon, all oh, this White Walker prophecy stuff, which we know how it ends. You don't know the ending of the books. You don't know how it ends. We learned practically nothing about the White Walkers from the TV show that wasn't already hinted at in the books that the book fandom is really interested in, like, w the exact mechanics of what's going on up there. We don't know that stuff. And it, this is, like, it, it keeps reminding me of, I keep coming back and going, guys, they're just gonna, this is a prequel, but they're gonna reboot it, much in the way of the X-Men movies. That Days of Future Past soft retconned what X-Men 3 did. And they have their own problems and everything and that, don't get me wrong, it's just, do you seriously think these are in the same canon? Season 1, this issue didn't really come up. They never overwrote anything that Game of Thrones itself established. So, it, in, in, in fairness, it, it, it didn't come up. That because it's a prequel, they could sidestep, are we going to soft reboot this, or, or fully reboot this as a new adaptation universe? My answer is, they're going to play it cool build up their power base and internal clout, and eventually Martin will ask for a new remake of a, a, or, or, some, or Condal or someone else in the scale of 20 years, okay? More than the... F not you know, Within our lifetimes, there will be a remake of this because it was that bad. If Rowling can ask for a remake of the Harry Potter movies that no one asked for, we can... Their greed works in our favor that they'll want to reboot this book accurate as soon when when the books are eventually done or Martin dies, whichever comes first, twenty years from now is what I'm looking at, ten years optimally, but the number of people who didn't even ask is that the real ending or not. So what they're doing in season two, actually showing them on screen, is I, I don't want to say exacerbated, but it, it's a continuation and escalation of focusing on the White Walker prophecy is actually really important in Season 1. And while it is it is annoying to hear so many people going, but I know how the White Walkers end, they've been doing that since Season 1, and ultimately it will draw that into focus. Not just review, I mean, the general mass of people, which it's so hard to... If they've been lied to and internalized, it's so hard to correct. That isn't what really happened. That Look how long it took people to turn against Joss Whedon because they just could not accept that he was really that crazy behind the scenes on Justice League. Yeah, purely from an administrative thing, not even getting to his personal stuff, that no, this really happened, because they didn't want to believe it. And a lot of people don't do research, they just see what's very prominently in public. So that's when the news lets them down, everyone fails, but... The White Walker stuff, that... that Season 2, my hope is that while it's annoying, people are going to bring up, oh, we know how it ends, it will increasingly 
increasingly as we go forward make people confront with this light bulb going off over their head, maybe that wasn't the real ending. They might not even decide it wasn't the real ending. Just, they're not even asking that question now. Oh, the Because they're so traumatized by this. And I said years ago that we know this is going to fail. What will keep get us a reboot sooner instead of later is keep the franchise alive with the successful prequels. So people are at least still talking about it, and eventually the longer they're talking about it, comes to reali realizing Benioff and Weiss were just pulling stuff out of their ass. That isn't the story of the White Walkers. And so many times, all the research videos I did, I know it's been a few years, and I did it during the pandemic year, but points in, like, the inside of the episodes where you notice they always say, we came up with this idea. We thought. They don't say Martin told us. Like, they're not going to steal one of Daenerys' dragons and turn it into a zombie to break through the wall. That isn't how the wall is going to fall in, this, in book six. Which we're going to get, That we're at least going to get book six. I, I don't know if they're going to end it or not, the whole series or not, but that'll be a big one, seeing how different that book is, the book six is. But putting that aside... It is just really weird when people say, I hate this because of the White Walker storyline went nowhere on a general level. And they'll just be forced to confront it, and we have to look forward to that a lot. And it, the phrase I came up with, it's beyond the scope of this one video you're watching now to address that. That is going to be a major theme of our online discussion for the next two year or two with Season 2 coming out is reassessing that that could not possibly have been the, the real ending of the books. And it's so weird that people, seeing the stunned look, I've seen like wiki analytics and YouTube analytics for traffic, while people were upset by the Daenerys stuff in episode 5, viewership dropped like a stone after the Long Night episode 3 of 6 in season 8. That is, people just tuned out and did not come back. The Daenerys stuff didn't exactly help, <laughs> but, but that was, it was this one night where even the first two episodes were presentable, or they couldn't get a feel for how bad it was yet, there were problems in them, but it was like a switch went off on a single night, and I remember seeing like the stunned reaction videos of people who had drunk the Kool-Aid and didn't realize, just the book fans going, we warned you since season five, that this is deeply, if it's not just, oh, they're adapting wrong, you shoved a main character, you threw her story out, put her in an offensive, nonsensical rape storyline, and then you said that this is, by season six, this is the best show ever. And, and then people go, oh, I guess there were warning signs. There were warning signs in the first four seasons. This is a dumpster fire, season five onward. So the example of season one didn't have to address whether this is sort of a soft reboot or not, that... Even the later X-Men prequels look like they could fit in the universe of the first ones. While at the same time retconning out X-Men 3. That they wanted this to look like it, it... It wasn't a total reboot. Like when we were going over the first trailers, it looks like it fits in the world of Westeros from Game of Thrones, but in a different time period. Increasingly, they're going to have to deal with are we setting up future storylines or not? That the prince that was promised was kind of an important thing. Other stuff like that. But the specific point was, there. that's for people complaining about it. From the other end of the spectrum, you have the clickbaiters going, wow, are they going to set up the Night King? Like, there's still people who think the Night King is cool. People who are thinking, I need a... There were people after Season 8 who their answer was, we need a Season 9 to make up for this. And they, they've been doing that since Season 5. Next season will re make it better. This is called the sunk cost fallacy at its worst. Next season will make up for this. Next season will make up for this. And they don't even think this out of, we need a ninth season. You can't undo that you had Daenerys kill an, a city full of women and children. Her storyline is ruined. You can't undo that. You can't... How about that Missandei is dead? How are you going to undo that? Or that Jaime went back to Cersei and didn't kill her, even though he's the younger brother who was fated to strangle her. You can't undo things like that with a ninth season. Because they're so attached to these specific celebrity actors that the idea of a reboot is unthinkable to them. That, no, I'm attached to these specific ones. That, look, unless it's a time travel retcon in the style of X-Men Days of Future Past that literally erases those events, it's not happening. 
time travel does, turns out, exist in the world of Westeros, as it does in Star Wars, it turns out. But so far, they haven't used it to change anything. You can make stable time loops, but whatever. I'm just, whatever, stop thinking in in-universe terms. We're just going to have a new reboot, a new adaptation from scratch on the scale of the next 10 to 20 years. And the, the people, when you get into the real hardcore clickbait channels, are just obsessed with, there's going to be a Jon Snow spinoff. I think the Jon Snow spinoff will be like Days of Future Past and reset everything with time travel. I've gotten into this, but so many people going, well, Arya kills the Night King, why should I care? Because, for all we know, Jon Snow is, is the one who kills the head White Walker or whatever in the books, more importantly, there is no Night King. And I don't see people asking that. The book fandom, we, we kind of figured out by season five, this is an invented character. I actually asked Martin myself about this, that it's not the Night's King, the, th the 13th Lord Commander. Different person, he said. So th there's, I think, even the majority of casual viewers, ne it's, it didn't enter their darkest dreams that given the amount of hype on the Night King... He's just a generic evil overlord invented purely for the show. This isn't the real White Walker storyline. They made him to sell t-shirts of him raising his hands, raising the dead. He never talks. He has no characterization or dialogue. It's just a series of memes. And, and, and trailer shots are all that that ever was. That... I don't know if there'll be riots in the streets, but it'll be quite a shock when people realize with the next book, with whatever, that there is no Night King in the world of Western, the real story. And yes, I'm using the word real, the real story of the books, and not this bizarre mishmash they threw at us. This was not a serious attempt at making an adaptation. Like, uh, looking at Apple, Apple TV's Foundation series is very loosely based on Asimov, but they take it seriously as a story, as a TV show, in isolation, because they did say, well, they would never have let us adapt the books straight. We needed to make up a new storyline with influences from it. That's the debatable thing. When you have a story adaptation, it's only a loose adaptation. You put in other stuff, but they still care about it as a TV show. Officially, the thing I figured out was early on is Benioff and Weiss just wanted, season after season three... They just wanted to pad their resumes with some awards wins so they could launch their movie career. Which, because of the ripple effect of, of the production schedule, that's why they were phoning it in in Season 5. And other people didn't really pick up on this until, uh, at least a couple people, thank God, after Season 8 went, this should have been at least 10 to 11 seasons, they were rushing out the door to do Star Wars. But it's not just Season 8, it's they were rushing from Season 5 onwards. This wasn't a legitimate attempt at adapting this. Or even, okay, it's a separate universe, like a comic book to TV show type deal, where, oh, well, in this universe there is a Night King. You yeah, made a generic thing to sell t-shirts. They thought their thing was more exciting than whatever Martin's doing. What I think the books are doing, if I had to say one thing, I think Euron is the dark messiah of the White Walkers. I'm not the one that came up with this. I'm talking about Book Euron, the evil warlock who people thought should be played by Mads Mikkelsen because he's like Hannibal. Not the rip-off Johnny Depp pirate we got, and even the actor's upset with that. That The theory is that Euron is a dreamer, that he has green sight the way Bran does, that he's like a failed Bran. That Bran isn't the only one with green sight, and he's like he was driven insane by the, vision, the visions the White Walkers sent him. Seems plausible, at least. And given all the stuff in the preview chapters for the next book, that he sees himself as this dark messiah to dark gods. That Euron might be their avatar, as it were. But the idea that... I don't think there'll ever be even, like, named White Walkers, much less a head one in that sense, in the world of the books. I don't think they're doing that. So on one hand, you have people going, oh, the, the White Walker storyline was so terrible. On the other hand, you have people champing at the bit for, will this set up the Night King? And it's, season eight, di even season eight didn't disillusion you with that Night King bullcrap? Where they said, oh, it, it's too impersonal. We need to have a, a specific villain to have a... It's as if they, want, they were, wanted to build up a specific White Walker leader 
to have a generic sword fight with Jon Snow, which is a, a formulaic trope, and then at the last minute panicked, realized it was terrible writing, and said, uh, let Arya kill him, which is just trading one problem for another. And I'll leave you with, this reminds me of something from Lord of the Rings. Briefly in the movies, they toyed with that during the final battle at the Black Gate, Sauron would personally come and get into a sword fight with Aragorn. Or like the studio is pressuring them to do that. But then the ring gets destroyed and nothing happens. And they filmed it like that. But they were really dissatisfied. They said, this makes no sense. It turns it into this glorification of Aragorn and not that... It, they're, they're making a noble, selfless sacrifice, throwing themselves at Sauron's nameless hordes of armies. That this isn't about personal glory. And they're just fighting randomly, and it's really about... And Frodo is sacrificing himself at Mount Doom. That in post-production, they changed Sauron to just a really big battle troll. And it works better for that. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you know what I'm talking about. Please share this in the comments. That I draw a straight line between the push to have Aragorn have a sword fight with Sauron at the climax, that they changed because they realized it didn't work, it was formulaic, to even if Jon Snow had killed the Night King in Season 8, it would have been, it would have been criticized as being formulaic as hell. Though there were pe are people who would have eaten up that shit, the, the Shonley casual viewers... It'd been formulaic. Then they did it. Like, the, not, it, it can always get worse. Not only did they do something stupid and formulaic, they then belatedly realized how stupid it was and made Arya do it. Which you can't back out of this now. That's even worse. So he, they probably made up the Night King, much as the reason we have that battle troll fight with Aragorn. They thought we needed to put a face on these villains, and we don't. Or if you do. Maybe you should have built up Euron more. Book Euron. So, I do not anticipate Season 2 actually... I, I've said, I think they're going to see, like, a proto-craster sacrificing to them. I would be very surprised if we saw the actual Night King, even if we see White Walkers. Like, the way we saw White Walkers in the first three seasons or something. We don't need to do that, and that will be... A question that's going to come up a lot the next few months, the next year until Season 2 comes out. Why would they want to set up a TV-only character that probably doesn't even exist in the books, the future books, is a TV-invented thing? This is, well, because it's in the book... It because Well, because it's part of the TV canon. No, they're going to remake the TV canon any more than all the nonsense in X-Men 3. Well, it's part of the movie canon. They'll retcon it. It's that simple. It was a stupid idea. You stupid man. That was a stupid idea. Why would they keep it alive? I don't think that... Then there's people... There, the people arguing for this are the ones who think it's salvageable. Even after season eight, think the type of person pushing for a season nine, it'll fix it, it'll fix it. The Night King isn't really dead. Daenerys won't really be dead. It's done. It's gone. Other than erasing it all with time travel, you can't make up for this like, there were people saying oh well we'll make up for the Sansa rape next season. you can't it already derailed her storyline I'm making a series on this but another one that a uh, video that I will link at the end of this and in the description is a very nice video well it's it was a guest video it was this really great article by uh, by um a writer uh for a reviewer from northern England who wrote this really nice op-ed about it couldn't have been the same as the book ending. We know too many things were changed already. I wrote her in and said, this is amazing, can you narrate it, and I will set it to video. And she said, sure, and it was really great, so please check that out again. Um, that Her explaining, you cut out Sansa's story, you cut out Lady Stoneheart, you cut out the Taisha reveal from Tyrion. Tyrion is nothing like his book counterpart by the end, or so generic as to be meaningless. Or the the... Uh, young Griff and the and the Golden Company and the Blackfires, this is so different. I don't even need confirmation it's not the same ending. That people were willfully blind going into Season 8, by Season 7 even, in Season 6, they stopped asking that question. So will the Night King be in Season... I sure as hell hope he isn't. Because I'm hoping they retcon him out of existence. 
and we have seen no evidence that he is. We're not even sure if, like, a generic White Walker will appear in Season 2, but if they do, okay. Like, I'm anticipating, like, one or two scouts while the rest of them are dormant. But follow me after the jump, because um, in, like, the first two of these videos I made were just introduction. After this, I'm recording an hour-long podcast. It's about four full pages of notes, scripted four single-spaced pages on what we think from the book perspective, purely from book fandom, what do we think the White Walkers were doing since the Long Night, and why are they coming back specifically now? And this is what I think or hope they will be showing in Season 2, or at least alluding to, rather than the TV-only Night King. So please stick around for that. <laughs>